So guys, welcome to my new Game Stuff episode 3. Now, I haven't been around for the last three weeks, obviously, because the camera wasn't here. The camera's back, as you can tell. But in that time, I've been building up a lot of video games uh, that I want to show you guys. So, this, act this episode actually might end up being a two-parter. We'll have to see. So, here we go. Just to let you know, none of these games are in any particular order. They're, they're just in big piles here. So, I'm just going to try to get through them one by one. So, for number one is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now, I gotta say, I'm blown away with this game. I, I've been spending a lot of time playing it. Am I any good at it? Absolutely not. I'm getting completely owned online, but I am getting better. I'm starting to memorize the maps a little more. But I never played the first game, and all of my friends did and told me I was missing out, but at that time, I was way too busy to take it on. And so I kind of jumped into this one, not knowing what to expect, and I've really been blown away. Like, I know there's a lot of first-person shooters out there, but this game, you know, doesn't fail to impress. The controls are tight, the graphics are amazing. You know, I love this game, I think it's great. You know, I, I would recommend it to non-first-person shooter fans. Next up is Fantasy Star Zero on the DS. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of time to play this. I picked it up, and I also picked up the strategy guide here. So I picked up both of these. I'm looking forward to a weekend when I can just kind of sit down on the couch and, you know, kind of delve into this a little bit more. That weekend hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it's coming up soon. A long time ago, I heard about a certain game coming out on the DS, and it was kind of on my radar, and then I kind of completely forgot all about it until Pete Dorr sent me a message, and he's like, hey, you know, have you checked out this, Nostalgia? And I'm like, oh my god, this game, like, yeah, so I ordered it right away. And I ordered the strategy guide as well for it there, if you can see both of those. Now, what I like so far about Nostalgia is, first of all, the character designer. He's the, he's the guy who does um, the Far East of Eden characters, for any of you guys who have checked out one of my videos on that. And he, he also did my favorite character of all time, Kabuki. But I love his artwork, and um, I'll tell you a bit about the game, just a little bit. Supposedly, uh, the director who did it wanted this game to come out on the Sega Saturn, and for one reason or another, it never, you know, came to the light of day. So he's been sitting on the idea for a long time, and when the DS came out as a viable format, bang, he decided to put, you know, to push the game onto this format. I guess it's kind of set in a 19th century European setting, uh, when airships are really uh, prominent, and it plays a lot like Dragon Quest in, in a way that that you're running and you get into random combat and stuff like that. It's a role-playing game. And uh, it's really cool. It's The combat's a little simplistic, but that's okay. I like my combat a little simplistic. I don't have a problem with that. So if you're kind of interested in a, in a new DS game and a new DS RPG, definitely check out Nostalgia. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I haven't played a lot of it, so I, obviously I'm not going to do a full-blown review on it. But I'd like to in the near future. It's kind of... I want it to be in the same weekend that I do Fantasy Star Zero. Hopefully I can do both those games at that time, so... Next up is Left 4 Dead. And this is the first one. And everybody will be saying, Wow, you, you waited till now to get it? I actually did, because... I always wanted to jump in and play the game, but I kind of just wanted to wait till the, you know, for the price to drop or whatever. And I had a lot of other games going on at the time. And so I played a little bit of Left 4 Dead with my friend. I finished the, you know, the entire one player campaign, which isn't too hard. It's good. I really, I really like the game. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm not rushing out to get the second game. Uh, I'll probably wait for that to come down in price as well. Now I can't do a new Game Stuff episode without showing some Turbo Graphics and Turbo Duo games. The first up is China Warrior. Now, I obviously played this back in the day quite a lot, but I finally got my copy of it. And it's a great beat-em-up. It's, it's, it's pretty simplistic. It shows its age, but it's fun stuff. Next up is Newtopia 2. And this is actually the Japanese version. I, I actually just wanted to own it. I, I really like the box art, go figure. But um, it's kind of like Zelda. Uh, the original Zelda. Newtopia 1 was a Zelda clone. Newtopia 2 is a Zelda clone as well. But you know what? Zelda's a good game. I didn't mind playing a clone of it, and it's a good one. It's a really good clone of it. And here I got Violent Soldier on the PC Engine. Uh, this is just a hue card. A shooter, a really fun shooter. Some really cool box art here. If you can, I'll do a little zoom in on that. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the box art. I finally picked up Violent Soldier. I love some of the names of these uh, Turbo Duo games, man. They're, they're so awesome. Violent Soldier. This is so damn cool. Now, I own the cartridge version of this. I finally have the entire box version, and that is for Streets of Rage. 
I love this game. I think I've finished this game over a hundred times in my lifetime. I just, I, it's just such a great beat em up by Sega. And I have the second game, Street Rage 2, here on the shelf. And it's so great to finally have the, you know, the original, the first one, uh, boxed that I can put next to it. Uh, I'm a big, big fan. Love Yuzo Kishiro's music. It was just so awesome. In the few weeks that I haven't actually been doing the show, it's allowed me to go back and visit some games that I really didn't give enough attention to. Games that I thought were incredible, but I never really got into them as much as I should have. And one of those games is Fallout 3. Now, the one thing about Fallout 3 is there's so much stuff in the game. There's so many places to visit, there's so many things to do that I started feeling guilty that I was missing so much stuff. So I went and ordered this off Amazon. It's the Collector's Edition Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. And I'm just using it as a guide to find some of the subquests uh, and to, to get a lot more out of the game. I don't want to see one third of the game. I want to see all of the game. Now here's something that just came in the mail the other day. I'm really, really happy to have it. And I hope you can see that here. It is Far East of Eden 4, The Apocalypse, the art book. Now, as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Far East of Eden, and Far East of Eden 4, The Apocalypse came out on the Sega Saturn. It's actually a sequel to the PC Engine games, and it's got some really, really nice artwork in here. I'll, I'll do a close-up into this. Uh, I'm just such a big fan of the character designer. As you know, as I said, uh, uh, I, you know, I love the nostalgia artwork. And he's just so good, and the background, the setting of this game is obviously from uh, America or a, a perceived perception of what America should be like. And I think they did a really good job, and it's really tragic that we actually never got this game. Uh, this is one role-playing game that, you know, maybe back in the day, working designs, I would have loved it if they could have brought it over. Maybe they had plans to it one time, I don't know. And on the subject of art books, I got a really good one here. This is the Final Fantasy XI World Concept Art Book. Now, I know none of you guys know this, but I actually used to be addicted to playing Final Fantasy XI. I'm really not bragging about that, but it was a really cool game for the three months that I did play it. And it quite literally was three months of me playing it. And it's really nice to be able to pick up the art book now and to look back on some of the character designs and some of the settings and some of the places that I visited in the game. Uh, really nice art direction, and you know what? It really gets me excited about Final Fantasy XIV. But if you guys are fans of Final Fantasy, you know, XI's artwork, definitely pick this up. I think I picked this up for like thirty-four dollars on eBay. Definitely worthy. Definitely good.